flow. When will the cash flow? How much will it flow? And into what buckets will it go? That was like a Dr. Seuss moment there. I did not mean for it to be, but that is really what it's like. And it is as simple as a Dr. Seuss thing. I know this seems really complicated to a lot of people, but when you break it down, it really is pretty simple. Hi everyone, it's Tina with Picture It Personal Finance, where I help small business owners and entrepreneurs become more savvy with their finances so that ultimately they can win with their money. Today, I want to talk about how to pay yourself consistently. I have been working with quite a few small business owners lately, and I have to be honest, one of the biggest struggles is figuring out how to pay yourself regularly and figuring out how to essentially mimic a paycheck. I will be honest with you, I think there are six steps to doing this and the first one is to have a personal budget. So often people will think that if they know what their paycheck is going to be, then they can budget for that paycheck. But as a small business owner, you kind of got to flip that. You need to know what your living expenses are and how much your business needs to pay you. So you need to know your personal budget first and then from there you are you have the information you need to decide what your payroll is going to be. So what your company is going to pay you um, if you're doing W2 style payroll for an S corp or um, to tell you what your company needs to pay you as owner's draw for those of you who are a sole proprietor, you know, single member LLCs and things like that. Once you know what you need to live off of, then you will be able to reverse engineer what it is that you have to pay yourself out of your business. Step number two to help you sort of prepare for that payment is to open up a separate account specifically for owner's pay. In another video, I think my next video actually, I will give an overview of Profit First and how I've applied Profit First to my business and some extra sort of examples of how I've seen some of my clients implement Profit First so that you can get a better sense of that account strategy. I love the Profit First method. It's an amazing book. I'll put the link in the description box for you. And like I said, I have a follow-up video coming. But at the minimum for being able to pay yourself regularly, you need to create an owner's compensation or an owner's pay account. Step three is to determine how much of your incoming revenue should go toward that account. Now you might say, well, obviously I have to put as much in it as I need to pay myself. Sure, yes, this is true. You wanna put at least that much in there. But here's the thing, you're going to have some months where your revenue is gonna be high and some months where your revenue is lower. So a more methodical way of handling this would be to say, 50% of all of my revenue is gonna go into the owner's pay account, or maybe it's 40%, maybe it's 20%. It really depends on what industry you're in, how much your expenses are to run your business, and how much revenue you're bringing in. Using myself as an example, I have low overhead for my business, so I take, all, I take 50% of all my revenue and I move it right into my owner's pay account. Ultimately, I am taking that percentage, whether it be 30%, 40%, or 50%, and I'm simply transferring that amount into my owner's pay account ahead of the days that I need to pay myself. So that is actually step four. Step four is to come up with a routine for transferring money from your income sources into your owner's pay account. Again, I really think you're gonna like this Profit First video that I will do shortly because it will give you a strategy for um, how to have money flow into your business and then flow into a variety of accounts to help sort of cover all of the needs of your business. But for right now, let's say you just have a business checking. What you wanna do is create another account that becomes your owner's pay account. And then from your business checking, as you get the money in, go ahead and transfer some of that into that owner's pay account based on the percentages that you've decided. And the routine of it becomes that you say, step five is figuring out when you wanna pay yourself. If you decide that you wanna pay yourself on the first and the 15th, then make sure that you are doing your transfers for step four on the 20th and the 10th, let's say. You just wanna make sure that your transfers for the income moving into the owner's pay account happens before the transfers where you pay yourself. 
When you pay yourself, I would recommend deciding what your paydays will be. You can decide on those paydays based on what is consistent for your business. So let's say that you run invoices and many of your clients have to pay you. Let's say you run invoices on the 15th and everybody has to pay you on the 30th. If that's the way it is, then maybe you want to say that your paydays are going to be on the 5th and on the 20th because you know that you want to make sure that everybody's had an opportunity to pay you so you have that cash flowing in and then it can bump down the line into your collection account, your checking, and then also into your owner's pay account. Hopefully this is making sense to you, but it's really all about cash flow. When will the cash flow, how much will it flow, and into what buckets will it go? That was like a Dr. Seuss moment there. I did not mean for it to be, but that is really what it's like. And it is as simple as a Dr. Seuss thing. I know this seems really complicated to a lot of people, but when you break it down, it really is pretty simple. So again, I'm just going to recap. You need to know how much you need to live on. Then you need to create an account to pay yourself from. This will be your owner's pay account. Then you need to decide as your revenue comes in, what percentage of that revenue do you need to support your lifestyle, then you need to transfer that percentage into the owner's pay account based on when the cash is flowing into your business. Then you need to decide what will your recurring paydays be? Will it be the first and the 15th, the fifth and the 25th? Will it be the um, every other Friday? Whatever that routine is that works for you, go ahead and make it firm. And then the last step is really to automate it as much as you can automate it. That way you don't have to worry about it. And I do mine on the 10th and on the 25th, I make my transfers and then my auto pays where I pay myself from my business account called owner's pay account and I pay my personal checking account. I do that on the 1st and the 15th because that to me was the simplest model that made the most sense. I hope this is understandable to you. I know it can be a bit complex, especially when you're starting out. Please stay tuned for the Profit First video that I will have out later on, probably within the next two weeks, because I really think that will help simplify this and give you a greater sense on what are some of the other accounts that you can have. Account strategy is just one of the best ways to make your business finances simplified. It seems more clunky in the beginning because you have all of these accounts, but having these individual accounts means having individual buckets. And then when you give each bucket a purpose, it really makes your life easier. So that's where I am today, you guys. I really am enjoying this uh, digging into and exploring how to improve my business, small business owner clients, what their experience is and how they handle their business finances. And so I look forward to pro providing more of this type of content to you. I hope you all are enjoying the beginning of summer and peace out. Talk to you soon.